What's up, wonderful people? This is Dr. Wally Renee from the Mod Institute. I'm gonna go a little bit outside my wheelhouse here and talk about milling for a minute. Um, we love milling. We have five axis puck mills. We have three or four of them at the Mod Institute, but most of you guys are running Cerax with MCXLs or prime mills, and you're trying to figure out how to link ExoCAD to your mill. You purchased in-lab cam, so you got the bridge, but you're getting fits like this that are complete garbage and you're frustrated. And you've, <laughs> you've probably tried to reach out to your local rep or maybe some Cerac gurus, and, and nobody really knows. But the, the reality is I'm getting about five messages, messages a day from well-meaning dental assistants, like having, having trouble and struggles with this. And so, you know, the good news is I've already spent hundreds of hours to, to figure this out, and I'm going to go ahead and show you what my settings are. So the first thing is in ExoCAD, we're going to go ahead and set up a case, and I'm going to show you for a single unit crown, because that's probably 80 to 90% of what y'all are trying to do here. And um, I'm going to go ahead and click on tooth number four in this instance. This is actually a case a dental assistant sent me that could not get the fit. So in ExoCAD, you have five axis or you have three, four axis. So make sure you're clicking three, four axis right off the bat. Click the material you're using, in this case, Emacs, and then look at your some, some of your settings. Uh, for example, material thickness, you're going to have at 0 0.4, 0 0.5, whatever you're comfortable with. But the cement gap is 0 0.9, so that's 90 microns. The beginning of the cement gap is 0 0.3. Um, your horizontal crown margin and angle crown margin, that's your margin boost. That's going to be 0 0.1. So again, beginning of cement gap, 0 0.3. Horizontal crown margin, 0 0.1. Angle crown margin, 0 0.1. That is your margin boost that Cerac usually needs so it doesn't chip in the mill. Milling diameter, 1.27, assuming you're using the normal uh, step burr. And then um, all my other settings are basically 100 microns from antagonist, zero microns from neighboring tooth for your proximal contacts. And that's it. So let's go ahead and load this case that she sent me that she was just um, struggling hard with. I mean, this poor girl must have milled like 25 restorations trying to get this to work. Um, first, pick your orientation, which you should be looking straight down on the tooth. I'm going to skip the AI just to show you how fast this could be. For margination, click somewhere that's crisp and distinct and then go ahead and go to correct draw and just tweak the lasso line if you need to. The good news is her doctor has skills. I mean, that's a really good overlay, crown lay preparation. Um, so we're good to go there. So it's definitely not the prep. So now pick your path of insertion, uh, which is also pretty critical. And now here's the thing on the crown bottoms, go to advanced, make sure you pick milling uh, bull nose 90% and hit apply. Make sure the burr size says 1.27 millimeters. And this is where you get the over milling uh, simulation there. And that's what's critical. That's what a lot of you guys are missing right there. So now we're going to go ahead and design the crown really quick. Uh, the design of is more powerful than Cerac, but not quite as easy. Uh, here is a step that Cerac skips. It's like a tooth placement step where you get to tweak a, a tooth that's not locked down to the margin. Um, it automatically cuts dynamic proximal contact and occlusion. Uh, here, I know this patient has group function. I could tell already, um, and I'm trying to decide whether or not I want to add it back for her uh, or not. And so I'm just going to slide this into group function here. Let me show you guys. I'm going to turn off my dynamics so you can see single point contact as I slide. And I'm going to turn on healthy just so I could see it on the adjacent teeth. I'm torn here. I bet if this wasn't like a crown lay or an overlay style prep, I would go ahead and leave it. But because it is primarily an overlay bonded Emacs, I'm going to go ahead and eliminate that transverse ridge contact on the non-functional cusp, uh, incline plane on non-functional cusp, and, and let them just do... Um, group function on natural teeth. So I'm just gonna go ahead and melt that back a little bit. And I, for me as a general rule, I like mesial marginal ridge contact on the uppers, single point contact on the functional cusp, and that is about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and eliminate all these other ones. All contacts on flat surfaces, not on inclined planes. So that's gonna get eliminated there. And there we have it. The software will automatically adapt the uh, proximal contacts when I hit cuddle intersections there. And let me just show you that. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my adjacents. There's the nice Oasis blue if you have show contact areas on. So there's the over milling that you're going to get. And that's what you want to see when you look down in the intaglio. Um, and let me show you also what you need to bring into InLab Cam. If you go to open and explore, your STL file for milling is there and your construction info. That construction info is critical for the InLab Cam to read the margin so you don't need to redo the margination. 
Um, so here you go, guys. She milled this out, said it was amazing, and she wanted me to give her a tutorial on how to do it. So here you go. I hope this helps a lot of other people struggling with this thing because, listen, we want to be able to use the most powerful software in the world with any milling system, and this is the way that you could do it. Thank <laughs> you.